corporate responsibility, enhancing your brand's charitable reach with technology. This is something we've been wanting to talk about for a while, huh, Jay? Yep, for sure. Your presenters, as you just heard, Jeremy Julian, VP Professional Services. Good morning, Jeremy. Good morning, Gary. And Ryan Williams, our marketing manager. Good Hi, Ryan. Morning. Good morning. Folks, our very special guest today, Michelle McCarthy from Rounded Up America. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you so much. Good morning. Give us a, give us a quick 15-second um, elevator on Rounded Up America. Rounded Up America is a technology platform that allows for-profit businesses to operate charitable giving programs in a financial and legally responsible way. Cool. You hit the mark. That's awesome. That was a great 15-second uh, elevator speech. We are going to work. <laughs> and we'll back into more about um, what Michelle's doing at Rounded Up America as we go through. Really wanted to talk about corporate responsibility, um, multiple forms, many different ways for us to approach it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open this up to Ryan and Jeremy. Come jump in on this because this is big. It absolutely is. And, you know, it's, it's been in the news increasingly over the last few years. Um, you know, you see so much about greenhouse control or um, bringing it to the restaurant space, reusing your fry oil or responsible disposal or water reduction, recycling. There's just so many ways that restaurants, specifically any corporation for that matter, uh, can kind of jump in and, and make an impact on the greater good of the world that, that we all live in. And, you know, we, uh, when we were trying to queue up this webinar, you know, we said charitable giving really is one of the most immediate impacts that you can have on your community uh, when you really look at all of the different corporate social responsibility outlets out there. Um, Jeremy, what kind of things have you heard in the news that have really sparked some of your interest? Well, I mean, I think I think Ryan said it um, said it correctly that that everybody and and again later in the webinar, hopefully, we'll prove to you why it's such a such a hot button for both your consumers and your employees. But uh, in general, it's just people expect businesses to make money but they also expect them to give back. And so there's lots of different people out there and lots of different ways that they're, that they're out there doing it. And any of you guys that know me personally know that, that I'm pretty involved in some different charity type, type activities, but everybody expects the businesses that they, that they work for or that they work with to have some kind of outlet. And you know, some of my favorite brands um, are great with it, you know, whether it be REI or, or Patagonia, and, you know, they, they do a great job of being socially responsible out there. And so it's, it's a great branding statement and, and allows you not just be for profit for yourself. Yep. No. Corporate good citizenship. Very much so. From the individual all the way to the business. And so this segues perfectly into this slide. What consumers today expect? Yeah, I think uh I mean I think as you look through that list, you know, we kinda were out doing doing a little bit of research and, and I think inherently everybody kinda knows that these are the things that are that are coming of age. I think that, uh, you know, 10, 15 years ago, things like transparency weren't there and you had a lot of, uh, a lot of big issues. And even, you know, in 08 with the financial crisis, there was a lot of lack of transparency with uh, some of the big financial firms. And so just that one alone is something that, that consumers are saying, you know what, I want to know what's going on and where my money is going towards as I'm doing business with these people. And so that's, that's just a huge one. Um, some of the other things that customers are looking for with the age of technology, that instant gratification, they want to know that they're able to make an impact today. They want to be able to send a tweet or, or post an Instagram photo and have it um, permeate through their network of people. And so they're used to that. They grew up, the consumers that, that we're looking for, and we'll talk a little bit about millennials, but uh, the, the consumers that are out there, they're looking for that. And so um, lastly, I think they're looking for the brands that they do business with to make it easy on them so that outlets to get involved, they want it to be easy. They don't want to have to put in the extra work because with that instant gratification, they, they're expecting to just be able to do something easily. You look at some of the, you know, the, the um, hurricane, you know, uh, that was down, sorry, um, Hurricane Katrina, you know, every, people were able to tweet or text and donate right away. So those types of ideas that, that um, some of these charities have gotten out there have been huge. So the consumers want to be able to make an instant impact, 
not have to spend a whole bunch of time going and looking up stuff and, and whatnot. They want to be able to just quickly and easily impact um, some cause that they're, that they're looking at. Yeah, so. Absolutely. Make it transparent. Make it make it something that I'm interested in, and make it easy for me to participate. Very much so. Very much so. And then, so for charitable giving, um, it you know what, Michelle, if you could give us a thirty thousand foot view of of how through charitable giving you're able to um, engage the community. Sure. So the restaurant industry has always been um, famous for giving back, you know, whether it's time of disaster or just generally speaking, they always have given back. And right now the big word around is community, right? What are we doing locally for our community? And so almost every corporate website, restaurants included, have a community page or some sort of description in terms of what they are doing to give back to their community and you know how, how they support it. In some cases you see them getting teams of staff members that go and volunteer. Other times you know you see their foundation giving back. Um, but in all aspects of it, restaurants and corporations are in, involved in charitable giving and it's a huge part of what they're doing both on their marketing side of efforts as well as engaging their employees. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, it's huge. Again, like Michelle said, almost every brand that we work with has some form of charitable giving and tries to get their um, tries to get their staff involved, and it's huge. And again, we'll talk a little bit about what your employees expect here shortly. So, and it, it, this for this slide, it really is talking about the majority of who your audience is. Your your customer um, is made up. Um, if not if not a lot yet, it will be predominantly in the coming decades. 80 million millennials. Ryan is our um, our in-house millennial, so we get a lot of of our research and insight into um, what these folks expect and um, why they shouldn't be ignored. The other part of this, and, and I'll pull Ryan into this conversation, is why? The, it, it's easy to say, oh, it's 80 million. It's easy to say, don't, don't ignore those folks. Well, here's the why before we get to the what, right? Take us through um, some of this information that supports that um, proposition. Well, Gary, it's pretty, it's pretty simple. I mean, the facts on the screen, uh, they really speak for themselves. The generation, the millennial generation, you know, as, as we showed you before, it's 80 million people. If you want to ignore 80 million potential customers walking into your store, uh, walking into your restaurant, you know, best of luck to you because uh, that's just that's a huge number and it's only growing. You know, it's the, our purchase power, I say our because that's my generation, but the purchase power of that generation is growing, it's becoming stronger. Um, and you've got to, think about the way that this generation was raised, we were raised with increased awareness. You know, we were raised with um, technology and being connected and being in the know with a lot of things. And the word activist, you know, that first quote, it's 7 in 10, 70% of that 80 million would consider themselves an activist. And, and today that word activist is a little bit different than what it would have meant in previous generations. Today it just means, you know, we've got a cause, we've got some purpose. We want to make an impact and we want to make a statement. So, uh, you know, four and five said they'd be more likely to support a company that supports a cause that they care about. You look at some of the companies, like Jeremy said earlier, REI, Patagonia, Tom Shoes, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're out there and they built a business model around sustainability and charitable Endeavor. contribution. Yeah, yeah absolutely. No, very good. <clears throat> And finally, it makes up 25% of the population. That's a, that's a big chunk. But you know what? Let's talk about the other 75%. There is 75% of, you know, the, the millennials, millennials are the children of the boomers, and then in between you've got the X, Gen X. Um, there's still that 75% out there that um, supports the local community, is old enough to understand the benefits of, of um philanthropy and has experienced at a higher level, oftentimes just through experience, but um, that other 75% is important too. Yeah, no, and I think uh, to that to that other point, I, I think that they're also influenced by the millennials. Yeah. They're, they're, the, the millennials are pushing because everybody's trying to get that next round of customer in, and so their parents, their bosses, their coworkers, 
that are working, you know, Gary and I obviously work with Ryan, and he's a millennial, and so he influences some of our purchasing decisions. When it's like, hey, all three of us are going to lunch, where do you want to go? Ryan will throw out something that will be in that place. And so you, you've got the, the other 75% that are being influenced to do those things. So um, I think that it's going to catch on, and it's not just going to be that, that 25% everybody is going to be at some place where they're going to be considering these things. Yes. It's not a fad and it's not going away. Yep. And then so th this takes us right to what, what, this, what the, your staff expects, what we as employees expect of our employers. And um, that transparency pops up again. Similarity between the consumer and the employee, I, I, I want to understand what you're doing and why you're doing it and how you're going to get there. And it, uh, am I, how, how am I part of this cause? Anything to add to that? Yeah, I think, I think it's the same answer. Your staff is looking for avenues to get involved. Um, you know, one of our, not necessarily a Rounded Up America customer, but, but one of our brands that we work with, they constantly have charitable events that happen through, they have a whole um, foundation as part of their organization that they will give people outlets to get involved and, abilities to do more and oftentimes they do it off the clock and they do it on their own time. So it's just great. I think the staff is looking to find ways to get involved. They spend a large percentage of their time at work and so they want to know that, that what the, the company they work for is also doing, um, doing good for the world. Absolutely. So Ryan, I know that right in the middle of the screen is, is the testimonial, but take us through this. Not only it's testimonial, but the surrounding numbers and their meaning. So this happens to be a Rounded Up America participant. And um, as you can see very quickly from the growth chart on the right, they've been able to, in a very short period of time, make a gigantic impact. If you look, 2010, they first started testing the concept. And by 2013, so three years later, they're at almost $164,000. Um, the impact there is pretty remarkable, but what's even more engaging, what's even more interesting is the fact that, you know, the uh, we have a quote from the general manager at one of these loose deals, and she basically is describing her life. She is incredibly busy. She's got kids going to practice. She's got kids going to school. She's got kids getting sick. Her staff is very much the same. Their life is very hectic. It's very crazy. And by using Rounded Up America, they're able to, in a very small, very convenient, easy way, be a part of a bigger picture. Yeah. They're able to. Uh, they're able to grow. They're able to get involved. They're able to, you know, reach out and help their community, even though they don't necessarily have the time to go out and, you know, do some sort of in community program or something like that. Yeah, and these are some significant numbers. Yeah. I mean these are these are real numbers. When you look at the jump from ten to eleven and and on up from there, um, as as Michelle had shared with us earlier, these are these are revenue streams from charitable organizations that weren't expecting those dollars, those tens of thousands of dollars. So um, the old what's in it for me? As a as a restaurateur, as a multi-unit operator, uh, these things are paramount to future success. And so, meeting consumer expectation, meeting employee expectation, finding additional marketing opportunities, um, engaging employees with a greater cause, and the very last one, a, a recruiting tool, three and four to seek out employers that support a social cause. So uh, we painted the picture of the reasons why you do it. And then finally, we brought up Michelle. She did a, a, a introduction in the beginning, but let's turn the, the stage back over to you. Rounded Up America has really um, taken a unique concept, built an efficient model around it. And so let's talk about Rounded Up America, Michelle. Sure, thank you so much. So I originally got involved with Rounded Up America back in 2010 when I was the Chief Operating Officer at the American Red Cross in Los Angeles. And I had the good fortune of meeting the founders of Rounded Up America, Harold Herman and Jennifer Wareheim, who at the time were the CEO and Chief Marketing Officer of Yard House Restaurants. 
they founded Rounded Up America in 2009 when they both woke up and saw the front page of the local paper stating that the food bank shelves were empty due to the poor economy and lack of funding. And because they are in the restaurant industry, they thought there's got to be a way that we can give back and, and fix this. You know, we have to participate with our community and help out. So they came up with this genius idea to add a line on the receipt whereby customers can round up their pay or their, their receipt or their bill um, when they pay by credit card and the funds would go to charity. So we partner with mission partners. Um, which we refer to our mission partners, the restaurant chain, uh, we have hotels, resorts, a theme park even, and they provide this extra line, as you can see on the receipt, to round up, and we collect the funds and we distribute to them on a quarterly basis to the charities that are chosen by the organization. So the restaurant or hotel, however it is, they choose the charities and the funds go automatically to them on a quarterly basis. And this is for Micros, Aloha, PosiTouch. Um, I know that they have quite a few other partners out there. Any, any others, Michelle? Yeah, we have, a, we have quite a few that are in development right now. Um, we have agreements to move more toward the, you know, the um, pay at the table platform, so with Presto and Zios and others, so all under development right now. Excellent, excellent. You guys have well positioned yourself. And then this next slide talks about uh, you know, I, I'd refer to it, a, mo a model has been built with uh, Rounded Up America, and um, boy, we brought up transparency enough time. Well, here's about as transparent as it gets, your report card, Michelle. So um, talk, talk to us about how, how you guys have successfully built this model and kept it moving forward. Sure. So the biggest um, you know, n note here is that a minimum of 91% of all money raised goes to charity. So you'll see down at the bottom there's a 2% uh, interchange fee that we allow our restaurants or mission partners to withhold to cover any credit card transaction fees that they might want to do. But more than 60% of our mission partners actually donate that back, and so that number is really 93%. And on a national average, you know, with, with nonprofits, administrative fees, et cetera, 93%, 91% is truly remarkable. So there's the built-ins in the program, 10% um, goes to American Red Cross for National Disaster Relief, and that mainly is because the founders, when they came up with it, they really wanted to support disaster relief. The hurric or the tornadoes, excuse me, in Joplin were occurring at the time that they were doing this, and Harold and Jennifer actually flew themselves as close as they could get to Joplin to deliver money to the food banks. They wanted to make sure that it could get there. Well, they learned really quickly, not only getting there is a challenge, but getting to the food banks, the right people to hand the money over was a huge challenge. And so they decided what they noticed the most was Red Cross employees and volunteers all around the disaster area. Um, and so they figured, well, this is a great way. We can't, you know, ourselves go to every disaster, but we can support the Red Cross National Disaster Relief Fund. And the beautiful thing about this is when Hurricane Sandy happened, all of our mission partners were able to say to their team members and their guests, we're already supporting this effort. We support it 10% of everything every day. And so it's a huge, you know, um, great opportunity for corporations to participate on a national level as well as a local level. Yeah, um, yeah. and then I was just going to throw in there, Michelle, that, that um, the restaurateur has the flexibility of choosing within their community. Absolutely. So the majority of it is that 75% flexible giving, and they can choose up to three charities and, and designate it however they wish. So usually, obviously, the most important part is what resonates the most with their team members and their guests. Mm -hmm. and most can you of give us some examples? Uh, can you give us some examples of some different types of charities that, uh, if if you you know have the ability to do it for uh, you know some of the restaurant brands that you guys mission partners that you guys have chosen? Just so, you can, so that our audience can get kind of a breath of, of where the money might go, depending upon, sure. you don't have to mention brand names, but the charities sure. that they're giving. Here. Yeah, so one of the greatest things about Rounded Up America is we don't have a um, restricted program, if you will. We're open to whatever is important to the corporation, their guests, and their team members, as I said. And so we literally have a theme park in Texas that ha is a botanical garden, and, and bat conservation is extremely important to them. So they fund bat conservation. Um, all the way up to, you know, childhood cancer research. We have, you know, organizations that are supporting that. The majority of our restaurants um, support food banks, so Feeding America, Share Our Strength, um, and also military services 
through Operation Homefront and other organizations. That's great. Thanks for it, it is great, and I I, I do want to touch on one other thing because um, I know that th this will come up in another slide. But some of the the challenges that a restaurateur would face in taking this um, charitable approach, Rounded Up America, and it, excuse me, Rounded Up America has really dialed it in because they can handle some of the uh, legal state county issues that. Mr. Restaurateur would open up uh, uh, or do himself. This slide, Michelle, take us through the potential because this is this is this makes a difference because these numbers are real. Right, and so um, basically, we see on average our restaurants raise about twenty dollars a day for charity, and you can see how quickly that adds up. Um, you know, with with the yard house restaurant starting with 27, they average over $40 a day. You can imagine it's really based on number of credit card transactions you have per day. And so about 26% of folks will actually round up with any, without any additional information. It's a silent ask. Um, and the average donation is around 56 cents. And the reason for that is obviously the bills differ in terms of the you know, total. However, um, about 3% of folks actually round up more than the same. So they'll leave a dollar or two dollars. And so, you know, using these numbers, if only one percent of the restaurants in the U.S. participated, you could see the huge number that would be raised every year. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, and I think to that point, it, it just takes a little bit. I think that uh, I think that everybody thinks, oh, I can't solve this problem. But you know what? If I can give fifty cents, and I give fifty cents, and Gary gets fifty cents, and Michelle gets fifty cents, you know what? It, it ends up adding up to some very large numbers. Um, when when you go through it, so it's not something that uh, it's not something that, that you end up end up you know downplaying. You look at that those Lucille's numbers from earlier. It's exponential growth as as it becomes um, more prevalent and people are expecting it. So. Absolutely, and the ripples through your culture touches back to the the employees you're attracting and their enthusiasm in executing any plans. Yeah. Um, so. Let's go through the partnership mission, Michelle. Okay, so as I referred to, we our restaurant partners, we refer to as our mission partners, and there's three simple steps to joining. We have an agreement that lays out you know, the, how the program works, um, and they select their charities, and then we manage and handle all of the training and accounting, marketing materials, everything for them. It's all built in. Um, they install the platform on their POS system, and they're ready to go. Yeah. It, and um, and then how do we get on board? If I'm ready to start doing this, how do I do this? So we originally work on the mission partner agreement, and once that's in, the, it basically just says that you agree to run the program in a compliant manner, and then we notify the POS company that you have signed an agreement, and they then work with you to get that feature for the extra line added onto your POS system, and from there on, you know, we manage it. Right through. So that once a month, the funds are sent to Rounded Up America. We manage all of the distribution to the charities. We manage, as you mentioned, all of the legal requirements. We're licensed to fundraise in every state and every county. So we take care of all of that for the restaurant. And that portion is huge. You see my uh, our easy button pop up here. Um, I wasn't very eloquent in describing it earlier, but Michelle just touched on it again. There is more to giving money away as far as legal requirements or tax implications for a business that Rounded Up America is taking into um, their bailiwick of what they do well into their wheelhouse and quite frankly it goes back to that slide of 91% at least 91% if not more goes to these charities um, that's a pretty powerful mousetrap. I was going to say Michelle can you talk a little bit about what some of those compliance issues that uh I, mean, I know when we were preparing that uh, that people that are not using a reputable organization like yourself that they might be able to get them get themselves in a little bit of hot water that uh, that they might yeah. not be aware of just to educate our our crew that's listening. Sure. So each state attorney general has their own requirements for cause marketing. So when a for-profit business takes money from the public for charitable purposes. Um, there are requirements and restrictions around it. In the state of California, as an example, you are required to file a proposal of, we'd like to run this program from this state to this state. This is how it'll work for our customers. This is how much you know we expect to raise, um, and this is how we'll distribute the funds. 
and there's a fee for that in California, and I believe it's around you know two hundred dollars or so. And then you have to get a permission before doing it. Now, clearly, not everybody knows this, and not everybody's doing it. But by running Rounded Up America, you alleviate all of those issues, um, and we can do it, like I said, in every state. So we manage all of the fiscal side and the legal side, and most important, the word that keeps coming up, the transparency to the guest, which is what's most important to be compliant, is the transparency. Where is the money going? And that pie chart that we have showing the 91% is so very clear and it's very well displayed on our website and that's what gives all the attorney generals across the country um, comfort that we're running a program in a very transparent manner. That's awesome. That's awesome. We're at the stage in it, it, where we're getting to the Q&A session, so down in the bottom right-hand corner of your control panel for GoToWebinar, please don't hesitate to fire in some questions and we'll jump on those. But back to um, these testimonials, Michelle, we've got a couple that you're able to purport for us that are, um, boy, they speak for themselves. So go ahead and take us through these. Sure. So Monique, um, Director of Marketing at Tony Roma, she said to us when she came on board, she said, you know, every month I had to come up with something creative to figure out how I could spread the good word of what we're doing. And she's like, by running Rounded Up, I don't have to do that anymore. It's built in every day. And that's another example of an organization that was thrilled to have a, a percentage going to national disaster relief when Hurricane Sandy hit. They, their guests were asking, what are you doing to help? And they were able to answer that. Um, as far as the Red Cross, uh, just the quick numbers here, I mean, they've raised, we've raised over $300,000 for them, and that's helped more than 6,000 disaster victims. So it's meaningful numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, this is real. This is really, this is really impactful. So, Ryan, we're at that poor point in our presentation. You got um, some questions for Michelle? Um, we've, had, we've had a few questions come in. Um, Michelle. Can you kind of describe the installation and the training that a restaurateur would need? Sure. So, as I mentioned earlier, once we work with the POS provider to install the feature, and prior to that, obviously, we are working with the management on training. We have training material and marketing material, as I mentioned, and we will walk them through exactly what it looks like on their end and on the guest end so that they can, you know, speak to it and work through it very easily. But essentially, it's a button when they check out on the POS system where if the guest chooses to round up, they hit the button and it rounds it up for them. So. Um, that's, you know, in a simplest format how it works. And obviously there's some prep work in terms of it, making sure everybody's aware that the feature it has been installed or will be installed and how it works. And also, most important, we connect the organization with the charity so that the team can, you know, really connect on that level with where the money is going. So we have examples of military families that dine at Lucille's, you know, just and they talk and the, the staff gets to know them. And so they sponsor families. It's a really neat, re, neat program in that sense. Great. Um, you know, PCI has been such a big hot button these days. What about PCI? Is this a secure thing? Is this expose my restaurant to uh, potential breaches? So the neat thing about Rounded Up America is the feature that is built into the POS system. So it just simply adds a line. It doesn't have any um, integration at all in terms of the credit card transaction other than to make the change round up. Um, we also do not get any individual information on any of the transactions. That stays strictly within the system and all we get is a monthly report that comes out of the, generated from the POS that shows how much in total was raised for charity and that's all we need. So we don't ever see any individual's information. None of that is traced or tracked. Nice. Any, any others, Roy? I think I, I've got one that I can take over here. Yep. Okay. Our last question is, uh, and I, I think we talked about this in a couple of the slides, is how can sites use corporate social responsibility to increase profits? And um, good question, something that we did speak to in those earlier slides, in, in what does your employee want? That transparency, the ability to participate in a, in a cause. What does your guest want or your consumer want? The same transparency. They want to know that they're doing business, that they want to do business, excuse me, that they're doing business with someone that they want to do business with, that is like them. It's almost like the old birds of a feather flock together mentality. How can you drive increased profits by being more engaged in your commuting, 
community by being a leader in how you're doing it and setting an example for others to follow. And quite frankly, that's magnetic unto itself. Yeah, no, and, and again, you could quantify all of it with, you know, turnover, driving, you know, turnover, that's not a revenue question, but, you know, employee turnover, if they feel like they are engaged with the brand and, and working with the brand because they believe in what they're doing, they're going to stay longer, that's a cost to the business that, you know, they're not turning over as often. You've got more consumers coming in, it starts these conversations about the charities that they might be having, it, it gives you marketing opportunities like Michelle talked about from the Tony Romas example, so there's lots of different, oh lots of different benefits that, uh, that I, I know brands that adopt um, Rounded Up America or, you know, some form of social responsibility if they do a good job of getting it out to their guests. Um, it's huge. It's huge. I mean, in doing our research, we had some other brands, some other really large restaurant brands that uh, millions and millions and millions of dollars that they've gone out and not necessarily using Rounded Up America, and I'm not trying to disparage, they, they're just big enough that they could do it on their own mm -hmm. and giving out tons and tons. And I know it creates brand loyalty with both consumers and with the staff. No, great point. I mean, there's there's those organizations that are, are big enough, powerful, have enough forethought and experience capability to do it themselves, and there's everybody else. And um, uh, to me, Rounded Up America, and what we bore out in real numbers that are going to real charities that are being, those dollars are being used efficiently and effectively, and it's graded. And, um, and then the easy button. They've made it so I can... It, here in Irvine, California, I can participate in Rounded Up America, have the monies go to the three charities that I designate, and the rest of it I'm, is yeah, really an afterthought. Part of the reason why we, we felt it necessary to bring not only – I mean, we know that this is a huge thing, so if, it's, if you're not going to end up doing business with Rounded Up America, you, you need to be considering this. And so as Gary and I talked about why we were putting this on, but – the thing that I love so much about what Michelle's organization does is they truly make it easy for the restaurant to not have to think through the things that they've already kind of done for you. Yeah, yeah. So that leads us to the end of our, our presentation. I, I want to um, thank, obviously, Jeremy and Ryan um, today to hear this morning. But, Michelle, thank you for, for what you guys are doing at Rounded Up America. Um, it is, it, it's important, and, and our audience should take note and share the information. Because um, at the end of the day, it's a round world that we all live in, and um, we all have something to give. Uh, these testimonials and these examples spoke to the, the busyness of the hectic lifestyles we all lead, and um, this, is, this is really neat. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, and thank you to everyone at CBS for being such a great partner. Our mission partners that use you guys have been thrilled, and you've been a pleasure to work with, and I really appreciate you having me here today. Awesome. Thanks, Michelle. Awesome. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Gary. You can connect with us, um, Jeremy and myself, as usual. Michelle's information is up there also, her email address and her direct phone number. Um, and then hit their website. There's w one last thing before we sign off. I know that they've got a dynamite video um, r right there on their website. So if you want a quick and dirty explanation of what they're doing and how they're doing it and how they're doing it successfully for other brands, please go to roundedupamerica.org and um, check out that video and share it with your boss and your friends and everybody else, quite frankly. So All right. that's it for me. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, Thank bye. you. Have a great day. Bye now.